Hello and welcome to another episode of the Asian Seller Podcast. I'm your host, Meghla Bhardwaj, and today I have with me the lovely Helena Nuhanovic, who's the founder of Amazonia PPC. Hi, Helena. How are you doing? Hi, Meghla. I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining me over here today, Helena. And today we're going to be talking about Amazon Posts which is a very interesting topic. A lot of people have been asking questions about this in our group as well. So I'm very interested to learn um, more about Amazon posts and how people can use them and what are the benefits of Amazon posts. So, mm-hmm. um, but before we get into the topic, Helena, do you want to give uh, a background about yourself and just tell people how exactly you help Amazon sellers and what is your superpower? Yes, of course. Um, our main superpower, I'm the owner of Amazonia PPC, which is an agency dedicated to providing PPC campaign optimization services for Amazon sellers. So e- either when they need to extract more profitability from their existing ad spend, or if they want to grow and scale their account on Amazon through PPC, that's where we can uh, offer the services and that's where we come really in handy. That's our main superpower. But we also do a couple of additional things like Amazon posts for some of our clients and product listing optimization where necessary, conversion rate optimization, and all these other things that help PPC performance uh, be better. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk, to talk to you about Amazon posts today because I think it's a fairly inexplored topic uh, still still a lot of sellers are not harvesting the potential of this feature that's still free by Amazon so maybe some attention should be placed there so that's the yeah it. very interesting so first of all for people who are not aware can you just give sort of an overview of what exactly are Amazon posts mm-hmm. Amazon posts are a piece of content basically that's been designed by Amazon and they started doing something similar in 2017 that was called Amazon Spark, but it didn't really uh, take off uh, probably as well as they have expected. Um, Maybe the reason for this was because just the audience wasn't ready for it back then, like a couple of years ago, Um, but now they relaunched the Amazon Spark and called it Amazon Posts. And the format of it basically is very similar to Instagram posts. Uh, you probably use it Instagram and you know how it looks like mm-hmm. on mobile, except that Amazon Posts can also be seen sometimes on desktop, on the product detail pages. So it's basically like a piece of content, very similar to Instagram posts, where you can see a big image, where you can have a couple of additional buttons uh, that can lead you to either um, the advertisers, either to the advertisers' uh, storefront or product detail page or, or, or the category feed. And, and you can use this piece of content to either promote some kind of special offer that you have, maybe a discount, or just to, to generate brand, brand awareness. Either way, it's free. So that's, that's why we try to endorse it so much. So is it only clients. available for brand registered users? Yes, that's the catch. You have to be brand registered in order to be able to use this uh, feature as long as uh, along with all other features that you can you get when you're brand registered. So we strongly recommend that uh, sellers who are in a situation, a position to do that, uh, to to register their brand. Uh, And there are ways how you can speed up this process uh, by using IP accelerator program, which is a uh, it's like a list of lawyers that uh, specialize in IP, intellectual property law, that are vetted by Amazon. And usually they will end up finishing your trademark much, much faster than what some uh, some of your lawyers would do. So that's, that's one of the ways how you can speed up getting brand registered and using uh, features like Amazon Post. Yeah, I think this year it's just uh, Amazon is placing a lot of emphasis on brand registry. So um, definitely all sellers should get brand registered as soon as possible. So why do you think sellers should use Amazon Post? Like what are some of the reasons and benefits? Um, we see it more as a big picture. Like like you just mentioned, it's going to be increasingly important to get brand registered. It's going to be increasingly important. Uh, why? Because uh, mainly because Amazon is trying to create the whole funnel experience for shoppers, like like um, like a virtual shopping mall where you have entertainment, you have um, shopping, uh, you have special offers, you have all 
at one place. And that's what they're trying to create, um, not only with Amazon posts, but also with uh, programs, advertising programs like DSP that offers you display advertising, which hasn't been uh, available before on Amazon. They're really pushing it hard last year and, and this year too. And also these uh, additional branded formats such as Amazon posts. And some of the main reasons why you should use that is uh, to promote special offers, to generate brand awareness for your brand uh, in a free way. And at the same time, you can create following. And uh, for example, if you have uh, if you have regular social media posts uh, outside of Amazon, like um, like uh, Instagram posts, for example, or Facebook posts, then the likelihood of you having that content already is pretty pretty big. So uh, you can easily repurpose that same content and adjust it to Amazon and then upload it. It doesn't necessarily, it's not going to need any extra effort to, to create that kind of content. And right now it's free. It's very similar to, I, I like to compare it to boosted posts on Facebook. It's something that you pay for. And on Instagram, also you can you can sponsor your stories. You can uh, you can show your um, Instagram posts to a wider audience. And I think it's only going to be a matter of time when Amazon is also going to charge this, like join it to the to the to, the, to their all other advertising solutions. Um, one of the reasons why I think so is because all other platforms are basically charging for something for a service like that. And also they have placed it under Seller Central very close to the advertising section, which is kind of like how they see it, basically. So uh, as, as soon as they figure out it's something worth charging, they'll start doing it. So now it's the kind of like the grace period uh, where you can test out and see. And there's not a lot of sellers who are doing it at the moment, uh, which is a good momentum in time to gain following in time. Like like you know everyone keeps comparing selling on amazon in 2016 versus selling in 2020 for example or 2021 it's not the game same game anymore so i think when it comes to amazon post it's not going to be the same in, in a year or two so this is the right time to do that now in my okay. opinion I should get the early <laughs> mover advantage <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent. right so how do people get started with amazon posts Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, first of all, they need to get brand registered. That's the, the legal paperwork stuff they need to go through. And then once they do that, they uh, I would recommend whoever's doing their uh, content, it, whether that's their content manager or their PPC manager or themselves, they should go through the uh, creative guidelines written by Amazon because not every Amazon post is going to get end up being approved. Uh, the reason for that is uh, there is a whole list of things that you can't mention in your Amazon posts or you can't, similar to like you can't advertise for, like for example, a weight loss is something, it's a keyword that you cannot target through PPC because it's on the list of the prohibited keywords. So similarly with Amazon posts, you have creative guidelines that you should stick to. Once you read them, you can start creating uh, your Amazon posts and it's a pretty straightforward process. It takes a couple of minutes if you have all the necessary creatives, such as imagery and things like that, uh, in the right formats. And also, another interesting thing is that you can just do a series of them and then schedule up front. So you can take one day at the week, create all your Amazon posts, and then they will uh, they will be published by uh, according to the to you to the schedule you have predefined, which is another good feature, I think. Right. <laughs> And uh, we'll also link to all of the creative policies um, that, that Amazon has for Amazon Post. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. So in case anyone's interested to look at all of the requirements and guidelines that Amazon has, um, you'll have easy access to that. So if you're listening to this podcast, head over to the AsianSeller.com and search for Amazon Posts and you'll find this article and uh, this podcast episode over there. So what does a post really look like? What does an Amazon post look like? Um, it has a couple of very basic elements, such as name and logo of the brand. That's the mandatory element. Um, it has a custom image that you add. You choose according to the, if, you, if the dimensions are right and uh, 
their con the content is according to Amazon's terms of service, then they will approve it. Uh, you have a show and hide button according, uh, and also uh, the caption and category tags, which means um, when someone scrolls, most likely it will appear on mobile because I think it was primarily designed for mobile. And um, it will look like uh, like an Instagram post, like very similar to it. And you, they will have an option to follow your brand uh, for further updates. So whenever is the next time when you upload something new, they will see it simply because they're in your following. So um, I don't know where Amazon is planning to go with this fe following feature, if this is going to expand into something further or not. But I think it, it would be wise to start uh, collecting following that you might be able to use later. For example, um, uh, on DSP, you have uh, it's it's an advertising uh, platform, additional advertising platform aside from Seller Central, that you can use to target audience targeting, audience based targeting. So maybe sometime in the future, Amazon will allow everyone to target their followers that came through Amazon posts and, and so make the full circle, like connect the whole, connect the dots basically. So if you can do that um, and target people who are following you or target people who visited your page, then you have pretty strong remarketing features and advertising. And um, I think that uh, when it comes to format, when it comes to how it should look like, um, we have tested different variants different things work for different brands so it all comes down to something like knowing your audience really well knowing what kind of content they will be looking for and what what they will find useful for example um, maybe you, it's a short format amazon post doesn't allow you to write a lot of words and and things like these so you have to make it usable but at the same time you know ent entertaining and not take too much of their uh, attention so uh, for example if you sell um, hair brushes then maybe you can add a couple of quick tips on how to maintain your hair or something like that that will keep their attention that will provide some value in the content that would be a good idea it doesn't necessarily have to be bragging about the brand and showcasing the product in some cases just products on the flat surface on the white background would be the best choice uh, they would generate the highest engagement so um like everything like if with all other types of content i think they should test and see what works and what doesn't work for their specific brand right do you find that the click-through rate is higher on amazon posts as compared to regular ads yes uh unbelievably yes uh most of the cases like our ads are going to be, uh, on average, I think click to rates on ads will be something like 0.5% um, on search and even lower on display. Uh, when it comes to Amazon posts, our average click to rates are around 1%, which is double. Probably because um, audience is not saturated with this new type of format yet. They haven't seen a lot of it, so it generates interest. And either it's going to take them to the product detail page or uh, to the category, or they are going to click the category tags. Where category tag is a button that will lead you to additional content where everyone else from the same category is, which is not necessarily doing your brand any good, but it, it's something that every uh, every Amazon post ha needs to have. So uh, try to make a subtle difference through the copywriting or through the imagery that will divert their attention to the listing instead of the category tags. Right. And do you have any advice or tips for sellers uh, on how to make, you know, really good and effective Amazon posts, any best practices that you might have? Um, we have tested uh, user generated content. Like for example, um, you know that reviews are everything on Amazon. Now, customers, average customer does not have the opportunity to touch the product and judge by, you know, seeing the size of it or you know, doing doing all these things live. So uh, the reviews are one of the main backbones of their decision making uh, when it comes to whether they will buy or not, especially these reviews have, uh, you know, uh, they have some images like 
this package came in broken and then everyone will <laughs> stop buying it, right? Or or vice versa. Like, this stuff really works. I lost 13 LBs, you know, and then everyone starts buying it. So that's how it works. And uh, with Amazon Post, we've seen higher click-through rates with user-generated content, meaning if someone from your Instagram account has endorsed the product, you can just ask them for permission to use that kind of content, use that image also on Amazon. Like, here is how we work for this and this influencer. So you can combine influencer marketing with this new, uh, it make create a fusion of uh, new format of Amazon Post, but also with, with the old approach of using influencers to promote the products. That's one of the best practices. And also another big best practice is just to test and see. Uh, one of the advantages of Amazon Post is that they provide really comprehensive reporting, which is something that uh, not you, you don't get uh, right at the bat, most of the cases with other features on other platforms. And you can learn from these uh, reports where they give you uh, insights like viewable impressions, like how many client, how many customers have actually clicked through to your product detail page coming from that specific uh, uh, copy, from, from that specific uh, image, or how many total engagements, how many clicks to the detail page, uh, clicks to your brand feed and, and things like these. And then... Uh, when you see all these insights, you can easily learn what works and what doesn't work and just double down on the stuff that works for your audience. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And then what about using text on images? Is it a good idea to use text? For example, let's say if I have a really good uh, review from a buyer, is it okay to put the review uh, like a testimonial mm -hmm. on an image? Is that something that works? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it's not always going to get approved. And um, similar to Facebook posts, they will limit your post approval if it has more than something like 20% coverage of text within the image. And then you're in a problem. And uh, they have predefined uh, formats that does include text at the bottom that you can where you can write stuff simply because that's how they want to uh, direct the customer's attention on the platform. And uh, I wouldn't really recommend it because um, if you can if you can use some kind of creatives uh, imagery or something that, you know, there is a saying that says an image tells a thousand words. So mm -hmm. if you can choose that kind of image, then it won't be necessary. And sometimes we like to avoid it because it, uh, in some cases it might represent uh, a brand in a sort of unprofessional way, maybe. Uh, if you are working with baby boomers, with uh, teenagers, it might work. But if you're working, if you're selling to millennials and, and uh, Generation X, and you really have to know your audience. In, in these uh, middle-aged audiences, probably not going to work. Right, makes sense. So what's important is that you want to make sure you're providing value and offering some maybe advice or tips or some sort of valuable information to the audience that's relevant to them instead of just trying to be promotional. 100%. And in some cases, it's not even that bad to be promotional if your product is something that's pretty straightforward. You know, like if it's a giftable product, you can push the promotion 100%. And then use Amazon Posts as a new format to promote the promotion. Like we have 20% off for Valentine's Day or for uh, International Women's Day. Uh, we have for, for these giftable products, we have a discount. And that, that's pretty straightforward. But in regular days when there's no uh, big e events coming up in terms of uh, big e-commerce events coming up, then you can add value and uh, focus on that. So. Um, uh, what I would suggest is for everyone to have a, a schedule of how they will distribute the content and what they will write according to the upcoming holidays. Like, for example, on Valentine's Day, we see most of the sales come in uh, on 13th and 14th uh, February, which is weird, but not that weird uh, if you keep in mind that there are a lot of prime customers who expect this to be delivered the same day. They just you know, doing it last minute. But we start uh, with a series of Amazon posts uh, on the 1st of February at the latest because there's a series of it that 
you will be in the conscious of, of the customers who will then buy on 13th and on 14th. So it takes a plan to do it right. Right. It's probably all the men buying last minute gifts for their girlfriends and wives because they didn't remember it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mostly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So in terms of frequency, are there any best practices? Like, should we do, you know, maybe one a day or one a week? You know, how much is too much? How much is too less? I think that uh, you can't have it too much. Uh, if you can post one a day or two a day, that's really great. But in most of the cases, just keep it realistic. If, if your brand can ensure consistency with two or three posts a week, then let's do it throughout the whole year. That's going to uh, generate much more following in the end than just da -da 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 doing it like for a week and then forgetting about all of that. Uh, unless you are scheduling up front and then they run for a while. So um, uh, my point is consistency compounds. So if you post two or three times a week, you will in the end, uh, and, and you're consistent, um, in the end of the year, you will have the probably the same amount of following someone who is a uh, who is posting frequently and spamming the customers, basically. Uh, but when it comes to this uh, consistency, it also has to be uh, not only in terms of frequency of posts, but also in terms of the content. It has to be recognizable. Uh, brand tone of voice always have to be the same. Use the same coloring. Use the same creatives. Uh, not to not to confuse the customers because. At the end of the day, one of the main uh, advantages of using Amazon Post is brand awareness. So you want to make your brand recognizable and make sure you have the brand guidelines ready for whoever is preparing these Amazon Posts so you don't come up as a circus. <laughs> like, here's the specific uh, format that we use. Here's the specific font, the size, the colors that we use. Here's our logo. It's always the same. And the imagery that we provide is always the same. So... Whoever can provide this kind of consistency, I think, should be worried about their following in the end. Right. Makes sense. And how how can sellers really check the performance of Amazon posts? Um, there is a very comprehensive report provided uh, that includes very good metrics like viewable impressions, total engagement, clicks to your product detail page, uh, clicks through to your brand feed on of all Amazon posts that you've ever up uploaded and published. Um, so <clears throat> all these metrics help you understand how your previous Amazon posts are performing and what you could possibly do better. So you can download this report in Excel and then play with it for, for a while. But I, I would recommend looking at it at uh, in the interface simply because uh, the interface will give you like a preview of what uh, Amazon Post, uh, each specific Amazon Post's performance. So if there is an outstanding performance on one of the posts, you can easily see which one was it and then remember what we specifically did. What Was it a coupon that delivered so many uh, engagements? Was it a specific creative? Maybe it was an influencer. Maybe it was a special day like um, International Women's Day or what it was so that you can figure out uh, what to do next and increase sales. Right. And is it currently only limited to images or can we use GIFs and videos as well? Unfortunately, you can only uh, use images at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to stay that way. I think uh, simply because video has been, uh, has been already harvested in different formats. You have product videos on the the imagery side of the, of the listing at the beginning of the listing and then you have related videos down at the below at the bottom of the product listings as well where all your competitors uh, videos appear if you don't populate it with your own so there is space to do that and there's also video ads um, which is a format that uh, is highly engaging video format is highly engaging but at the same time amazon is trying to protect the uh, customer experience on the platform, which is why they're limiting it to a certain number of uh, features. Only you can use it, it's probably going to stay that way, that you can use it only in these three places. Mm -hmm. So I would place my focus, I would make the focus only on these three placements for video, especially the, the customer reviews, I'm sorry, the, the 
the related videos down below in the product uh, detail page. Most of our clients are not paying enough attention to it, so we try to um, do it together with them to add more videos, any kind of videos, because when you click in that video, um, it will show the link to your competitor's product detail page. So if it drives attention of your customer and they see a good video from your competitor, their attention will be diverted away from, from your listing and that's not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that Amazon posts, as Amazon posts are going to stay, I think an image only uh, kind of feature. Right, makes sense. So in your experience, have you seen certain product categories do better with Amazon posts than other categories? For example, fashion, beauty, those kinds of products, are they doing, typically do they do better with Amazon posts? Uh, that's an interesting question. We haven't been able to uh, isolate any category that was better for it. Mm -hmm. Simply because uh, similar with PPC strategies, you create a strategy for content for of all the products that you create Amazon posts for. And if it's going to be a tool for guys that it use that are a handyman, for example, then there are ways how you can promote that through Amazon posts in a very effective way. And at the same time, and also like if you're selling, uh, like I mentioned, hairbrushes, there are also different ways how you present that to female audiences and et cetera. So, uh, we haven't really seen any categories stand out in terms of performance on Amazon posts, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, is there any relation at all to PPC? I mean, can you, for example, use, you know, the data that you get from Amazon posts to maybe optimize your PPC or, you know, um, I don't know if you can get, you, you, you don't have keywords in Amazon posts, right? You don't, you, you don't really know how people landed on your posts. But is there any, you know, correlation between Amazon posts and PPC at all? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, there is correlation, but it's limited. Like when, like you mentioned, um, keywords using keywords within Amazon posts is something highly relevant. I would, I would recommend that because you are driving organic traffic to your listing through Amazon posts. So within uh, somewhere within the short line of text that you're allowed, you should be uh, using some of your main keywords that are most important for that product, for the specific product. And then that's how you will raise your organic listings, your link listings organic ranking, one of the ways how you can do that. And through PPC, mostly you already have a keyword list and you can see what keywords work, what doesn't work and which ones to potentially use on Amazon posts. And uh, when it comes to Amazon posts contribution to uh, PPC, I think, um, you can use that, uh, see what copy works with. You can test different types of copywriting, different types of copy through Amazon posts. And then if something works exceptionally well, then you can use it for sponsor brands ads, for example. They are the ones that have that custom line text that allow you to write whatever you want. And uh, we've seen that those two influences between Amazon PPC and posts. Uh, <clears throat> Although I think that they work for the same goal in the end. What's the right. point of doing PPC if your organic ranking is not going to grow over time? And also, what's the point of using Amazon Posts if your organic ranking is not going to grow over time? It's the same exactly. goal. And um, what do you see is the future of Amazon Posts? I mean, where do you see Amazon going with this? You mentioned previously that Amazon may start charging for this because, um, you know, it, it seems like something that they would they would start charging for. But overall, do you have any predictions of where Amazon Posts would go in the future? Um, I think they'll be an integral part of the whole shopping experience on Amazon. They're here to stay. Um, that's why they've repurposed it from 2017 to today, uh, because they. It's. Uh, I think the audience is now ready for it. Um, Amazon has gained a mass, huge, huge popularity last year because of the whole situation we're having with the pandemic, and people uh, in general shifting towards from retail towards to e-commerce. And that's, go that's going to be, it was a catalyst that, uh, speed, that actually sped, speeded up the process that was supposed to last for a couple of years. It happened in two or three months. Everyone started shopping online. So uh, what we lack is the experience, basically. 
who you like as a shoppers. I mean, uh, experience where you have additional type of content, additional, uh, you know, getting familiar with the brand, uh, buying from ethically sourced uh, sources, buying from ethical sources, and things like these that add up to the customer experience will prevail in the end. And they will; uh, these kinds of brands are going to grow in the future. So I think Amazon is uh, recognizing this as a trend and then they are emphasizing on all branded types of content that they, they could possibly push through their platform without uh, necessarily damaging the customer experience. Right, makes sense. That was a lot of good information, Helena, about Amazon posts and definitely sellers should take advantage of this uh, very innovative, creative type of way to put their, uh, to show their, showcase their products and to reach customers on Amazon and especially because it's free right now. So why not take advantage of it? So yeah, thanks a lot, Helena, for your time today. And uh, do you also want to tell people like what's the best way to reach you in case they, they want to get more advice and um, you know, you of course specialize in PPC, so feel free to also tell us, uh, you know, what specific services uh, that that you offer, or you want to, you know, highlight some key services uh, for our audience, and also how can people contact you? Um, thank you for giving me the space to say that. Uh, if someone wants to reach us out, they can best do it through our website, AmazoniaPPC.com, and there is a contact form that's always monitored by someone. So. We provide very fast responses. Um, in some of some most of the cases, our service is going to be a good fit for someone who is either looking to cut spend on their Amazon PPC and again generate more profitability, or if they have good conditions with their inventory and they want to grow their their account. So these are the main two. Uh, uh, these are the main two expertises that every Amazon PPC uh, manager should provide, and we're doing that. Aside right. from doing additional things like this, like uh, Amazon posts and product listing optimization and similar. Right. And do you mm -hmm. cater mostly to, you know, mid-sized large buyers or are you also okay to work with smaller uh, sellers who are, you know, just starting out, maybe they don't have significant sales, but they're still growing. I mean, do you have any particular type of clients that you generally work with? Uh, we prefer to work with established sellers who already have stable inventory. That's number one thing we look at when we estimate whether someone would be a good fit to work for, whether we would be a good fit for each other. Um, but if someone is just starting out and they want, they need uh, guidance through all of that, I would recommend them to search for a product launch specialists. Like there are agencies that specialize in doing product launches simply because it's not only consisted of PPC, but also through, uh, there, are, there are different Telegram groups that they use to generate reviews and uh, send out um, different uh, products to, to be reviewed through review platforms like rebate.com and things like these. So there's a lot more to it than just PPC. But when it comes to Amazon PPC, if you already have some kind of big spend like a couple of thousand dollars per month that you want to uh, scale up or scale down, then that's uh, something that requires a more experienced hand. And we are good at it simply because we have touched so many accounts. We've seen different case studies, what works and what doesn't work and in all categories. So um, I'm pretty sure we can provide value to a lot of sellers who are looking for that. Right, fantastic. Well, thanks a lot, Helena. And um, yeah, wish you all the very best. And uh, I will you. see you around. I, I always see you in all of the different podcasts and conferences and you're like everywhere <laughs> and panel discussions and everything. So, yeah, I'll see you around, Helena. All right. You take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.